States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call the roll. Councilor Fishpine, absent. Councilor Lappin, here. Councilor Returno, here. Councilor Mansfield, here. Councilor Parisi, here. Councilor Russo, absent. Councilor Sullivan, absent. Councilor Testa, present. And I am here. All right. The purpose of this evening's okay. meeting is to discuss. Uh, the amendment to the Municipal Solid Waste Disposal Agreement with Cavanta and the amendment to the Host Municipality Fee Agreement between Wallingford and Cavanta. And uh, why don't we start with Councilor Letourneau. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. uh, first, I'd like to thank the Chairman and my fellow Councilors, the Mayor, Don Rowe, and Doreen for being here tonight to uh, Answer, answer some questions. And this is purely a fact-finding uh, meeting, and for me, anyhow, to help uh, digest some of the material that was given to us the other night. And it's a complex agreement, and uh, I just felt that it would, it would help if we had this meeting and the chairman and the mayor indulged in it. So, um, what I'd like to first get into is uh, maybe help explain some of the documents. The first amendment to the Municipal Solid Waste Agreement um, is dated February 1st, 2012. And then we have the second amendment to the Solid Waste Municipal Agreement of November 18th, 2014. And we have the original Municipal Solid Waste Disposal Agreement between the Town of Wallingford and Cavanta. So this is the original contract that you gave us? Okay. So the, the first amendment, um, that this first one was done to this contract already back in 2012? Yeah. Okay. So the second, the second amendment, this is what they're proposing to the contract, to the original contract. Yes. Okay. So it's not, it's not the canceling of the original contract. That basically stays in place. It's the amendments that takes pieces out and puts pieces in. Okay. Um, which is good because I think that, you know, there was a perception out there that the contract was being just uh -huh. discarded. And, you know, so that's good. Um, they talk about, in the second amendment to the municipal waste, um, I'm just going to stay on the, on the page here, um, the host fee agreement. Excuse me, can I, is that November 18th, the second amendment? Mm, uh, the Second Amendment, yes, November 18th, 2014. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Cavanta and Wallingford desire to enter into, this is, I'm sorry, this is the um, uh, second paragraph at the bottom. Thank you. Whereas Cavanta and Wallingford desire to enter into a First Amendment to host a municipal fee agreement dated as of even date here of and then in parentheses, the first host fee amendment to restructure the fee payments to their under. So what they're looking for, and stop me at any place if, if I stray, um, Dorian, mm -hmm. or the mayor, or Don. Um, so what they're looking for there is, is the beginning language to change the, the uh, host fee from $11 a ton down to the $5 a ton. How did that, if you could give us some history on that, how did, how did that come forward? I, I know 
originally, years ago in this project, I, I understood some of the other towns, um, the participating towns, they weren't really thrilled with our getting that much for a host fee. And, but they, okay, they agreed to it and, and we ended up at $11 a ton. If, if you could, or somebody could walk us through how did it? How did it end up at five dollars? Was this just a figure that it was cabanta, or was this negotiated, or, or how did we? How did we come to five dollars for the host fee? Basically, they wanted it to be a dollar, based on economics. The you know, economics of uh, solid waste disposal completely changed. It's it's pretty much in chaos with tip fees straying all over the place. I think uh, there's mixed messages from Hartford with regard to what plant should be open or closed. Um, and without the electric revenues, which is the opening card that they, the electric revenues aren't there. So a lot of these plants were based upon electric revenues. Mm -hmm. And we had an initial contract of 22 cents a kilowatt. Well, that, that disappeared several years ago. and. Uh, they're saying it's just uneconomical to run that plant, in part because it's relatively small compared to the others in the state, and uh, the amount of the host community benefit is well above what is paid anywhere else, and so that obviously is a drag on, on whatever the tip fee might be, and um, then it became a chase to find solid waste once the uh, Midcon the Hartford project came due. Uh, CRA was in trouble, so uh, uh, Covanta and, and a number of the uh, companies involved were very active in looking to get spot waste from from towns that previously you couldn't get the spot waste from up in the Hartford area, but they were looking for a change because they were kind of fed up with their experience with CRA. And uh, the result is, you know, this great turmoil, the economy went bad, and so the, the, there was less waste to be disposed of. So all of those factors all, all combine, and the plant is not economical to operate. So we, we argued for not the dollar, obviously. Uh, you see the dollar with the waste outside of the five original towns. Tonnage brought in from other places will be a dollar in the uh, proposed agreement. But, you know, they, they, were, they were very uh, interested in, in uh, having that be the uniform fee across the board. But there, for the first year, I think right now we're paying $70 and change per ton. $70.30. $70.30. <laughs> and for the five-year breakdown for the next five years, it would drop down to 65 and change. And then it progressively goes back right. up. Right. The original, the terms of the original agreement is that the, the tip fee does increase by a CPI adjustment every year. Mm -hmm. um, we have a floor and a ceiling. The floor is 1.75%. The ceiling is 2.5%. So, um, 3.5%. So it fluctuates, you know, between those two numbers. Um, that gets applied every year. Right. And every five years, you know, our, our the original contract states we, we do the local market reset. We take um, the tip fees at six similar projects around the state, and we look at the average of those six. And we have to agree upon a number, I mean, the, the member towns get to pick three projects and Covanta gets to pick three projects. So we have to come to some agreement with those six projects and what the local market reset will be. And was that right from the beginning? Did that happen right from the from day one? It hasn't the, happened yet. We haven't. The, the original contract. The original yes. contract. Yeah, the, that's, the, that's right. part of the original Every five contract. years there's that. Reset, that potential for a reset. What did we start with the original contract? What was our tipping fee? $65. It was $65. Okay. So, 
with the original contract, and they were burning a burn plant at that time. And I know that they were they were generating. They had a very sweet deal for the electric, um, but we were able to get eleven dollars a ton. So basically, now what's happening is we're resetting back to the original agreement at sixty-five dollars a ton for the first year, and then it's going to eventually ramp up to where it is today, seventy dollars a ton. I don't understand why, you know, it, it, I'm wrestling with the five dollars a ton. Why couldn't it have been more closer to the original eleven dollars a ton? I mean, nothing, nothing's really changed. If anything, they're still making the same amount of money as it was when it was a burn plant on a tip fee. They're still going to be charging basically the same tip fees as the original part of the contract. We'll get a five dollar and thirty cent reduction this year. I mean, yeah, I know, but they started they started at 65 and they were giving us $11 a ton. They're resetting, they want to reset the contract for five years at $65 a ton. And instead of giving us 11, they want to give us five. And we're letting them basically, you know, out of the contract. We're doing them, doing them a favor of letting them out of the contract. I think it would be, you know, it, Behoove them to say, okay, you know what? We're getting, we're getting a deal. They're going to let us out, out of the contract or that end. Make these amendments, but we should get, you know, I feel that we should be getting eleven dollars or pretty, pretty close to it. that dollar a ton for that, that extra, uh, for the commercial waste coming in. Uh, we probably won't see much of that because I talked to some commercial haulers and, and you know, this. This transfer station is not going to see a lot of commercial waste that, because they they go by the spot market and they'll take they'll go to Bridgeport they'll go to Hartford they'll go all over the place. Well, it depends it depends upon what the need for waste yeah. is. You know, if they really need enough waste to uh, to function properly there, I mean, they can drop their their tip fee for the commercial waste as well. Uh, regardless of what they charge on it, we would get a dollar. But, but they're not taking, they're not going to take, they're going to be very limited to what they're going to take. If you read back deeper in the contract, they're not going to take a lot of heavy duty commercial waste. I mean, it's, it's well, basically all household. No, no change, there's been no change as to what waste they'll take. To my knowledge, there's no change in the language in the no, contract. No, no, it's all, the, the waste is the same, municipal solid waste. So yes. some, of, yeah. some of that's commercial, some of it's residential. But you have to keep in mind, if they're going to pay us more, then the tip fee has to be higher. And that's, that's certainly their argument. The other towns all wanted a lower tip fee. Well, someone's got to be paying the money in to have them have the money to pay. So how do you drop the tip fee? There's less waste out there and continue to pay a very high uh, host community benefit Where's the money coming from? Well, the tip fee would have to be higher then. But the tip fee is the same at sixty-five dollars a ton. It's the same as when the when, when the contract was original. It but they're not they're not making it now at seventy dollars. But well, but the thing that we're leaving out of this component of the discussion is that when they started this agreement at sixty-five dollars a ton, they were also selling electricity that they were generating at twenty-two cents a kilowatt hour. No, no, no. Was, what, what was the rate? They were selling electricity, though, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, the first year the rate was uh, closer to six and a half cents. Okay, and, and it graduated up? No, it's gone down. Okay, thank you. It was a, a slight that. bump up last year. Uh, we had a couple of months where electric rates spiked, uh, so they saw a slight increase, but right now electric rates, um, wholesale electric rates are around three cents, three and a half cents a ton. That's the market? Yeah. But was it when this was? This whole uh, scheme was developed. Wasn't there a higher contemplated right. well, the first modeling? The modeling that was done, either by Covanta or by CRRA or by our consultant that we had involved, all had a higher return for electricity. Right. And so the, the point I'm trying to make is that when this agreement started with a $65 per ton tip fee, it was anticipated that the, there would be additional income to the enterprise as a result of being able to sell the electricity generated. Correct. Okay. 
That's so, true. Which is, which is going away. That's true. But they're changing the operation to a... Uh, they're, they're getting rid of the burn, and they're going to compact it and, and ship it out. So I don't see where the numbers have changed that much for them. Otherwise, if they weren't making it, I think the tip fee right off the bat would be higher for them to be able to make it. Well, you know, my explanation behind it is just that you know, back in those negotiations originally, and you know, certainly uh, the chair of the council at that time was a party to that. Um, the, the change that was going on in solid waste was this um, change where the private sector was looking to take over public sector, you know, and how it is they then arrived at their pricing versus, you may recall, we actually went through a process with CRRA at looking at plan acquisition and what that would lead to in terms of a tip fee. And I don't know whether you remember that number, but it was just a little bit south of 100, I believe. Mm -hmm. okay. The, and we would have had to purchase the facility. And we would have had to purchase the facility. You know, the, ec the economics have changed dramatically for waste energy. Um, I'm going to defer to so Can I follow up on that with a question? Go ahead. What is the difference between the plant now and the transfer station? Well, the plant now, we, they take in the waste and they process it by incinerating right. it and generating right. electricity. At a transfer station, they're just taking in the waste and then um, it will be dumped on a tip floor and then it will be repackaged um, or, or redeposited in right. larger hauler uh, type um, trucks and go out to be processed at another facility. Well, it, based on your description so of my own, it sounds like it's a lot less expensive for them uh, labor-wise yes, for a good. transfer station. But you have to keep in mind they then have to play, pay for the processing of it somewhere else. Yeah, you're paying for the transportation and the processing. There's transportation plus then there's the disposal elsewhere. I understand. Because that would be burning. So they have to pay a tip fee somewhere else in order to have it burned. I understand that. So that becomes our their responsibility. Cost, their cost still has to be significantly lower. Uh, not necessarily because now you're paying for transportation plus you're paying the cost to be incinerated elsewhere. There's got to be less direct labor in the plant now because they're not okay, really... They're, a, they're picking up a large expense in the cost of the tip fee to incinerate uh, it somewhere else. I, I find that, with all due respect, find that hard to believe. I would think it's far less expensive to run a transfer station. Well, it's less expensive to run a transfer station, but they still have to dispose of the waste. So there, the money for that is coming from us in our tip fee. If they just ran a transfer station and they were picking up money from somewhere else to deposit it at Bristol or where else, else wherever else, then that would be one thing. But that's, that's now a cost of the transfer station to dispose of the waste somewhere. So they, mm -hmm. they have less cost in operation other than they they're now have trucking fees or, or some increase in trucking fees. But they don't have ash, so maybe there's not a huge increase in trucking fees. But they have to pay for that tip fee elsewhere to dispose of it. So it's not that it's just the operation of a transfer yeah. station, it's the whole disposal of whatever solid waste they receive. Thank you. Councilor Testa. Thank you. Um, what I've been wonder, <clears throat> wondering about trying to wrap my head around is, is um, obviously the overall justification they'd have for not being able to honor the current host fee. Let's just stick with that for a moment. 
Okay, and I see a few things happening. But my question is, during the <clears throat> negotiations, did they actually provide financial analyses that no. showed, that demonstrated, here's our cost. Mm -hmm. This is what it's going to cost us. Because are, are we in a situation where for all, I mean, I could, you know, I could try to figure it out on what I think would be common sense that, you know, well, I shouldn't even say that, but, you know, they just, what do I think the market's like and say, okay, <clears throat> um, it's going to cost them $50 a ton and still truck it and then exit, blah, 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 right? But for all, but that wasn't laid out for you when they said it, we can't operate at a certain amount of money because it's going to cost us this. In other words, I know a business isn't going to lay out their profit and loss for you, but that's kind of where we have to we have to take them on faith. For all we know, they're, they're going to make twenty dollars a ton with the new with the new operation. Our, our and, and there's a, and there's and we're leaving cash on the table. Our only double check on is what's happening <coughs> elsewhere that we're aware of in the industry. Right. And we, we know that there are major changes, major issues, very evident. Right. So they they were very willing for all the towns to walk off. And for them to do what? They'd walk away. If we all left the contract, they'd, uh, they'd, they'd walk off. And that, that one of the towns indicated, you know, well, maybe I can get a better deal somewhere else. He said, fine. They'd release. They, they, they had no, there was no, it was pretty clear they didn't care if we continued with the project or not. That raises some serious questions for us because at that point you have no place to take the solid waste, number one. Number two, if there's no project here, there's no host community benefit at all. Yeah, I, I, so, I grapple so, with that as well, certainly. So, so you're, you're faced with they were all set. They can't deal with the contract they have. If we, if it was such a great money maker, I don't think they would have had the attitude. One of the larger towns said, "Well, if I can get a better deal, you know, I want to cancel now." Fine. Fine. So if all five towns said we're 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 done, they would. I think my read on it, they'd been very pleased. And they would not write at all. You're saying they would just shut the facility down and close I don't know. It. Whether they'd use it for themselves, for excess waste from anywhere, I don't know. But at that point, once you're not in the contract, we wouldn't be arguably in a position to have a host fee or, or the project itself with the command in the marketplace of 100,000 tons wouldn't have that command anymore. So now where are you going to get long-term contracts to take solid waste? I mean, all, with, the, with the way the marketplace rate is, is right now, I, I wouldn't suggest that's a good place to be, trying to find a place to take the waste. Well, if, well, since we, you mentioned that, I mean, that's, that's a possibility. I mean, there's a lot of options here, right? One option is, okay, uh, this is all over. It's all over, and now we as a community are like many other communities, and since we don't have our own right now, municipal waste processing service um, it's you know every homeowner is going to contract with a private hauler and work the market and they'll get charged with whatever and that's an option that's one option if we don't have this agreement it's not really an option because under state law we are obligated to have a place for waste generated within the boundaries of Longford to go so Don't municipalities, right or wrong, are given that. that responsibility under state law. So you couldn't tell all the homeowners, all, all the businesses, whatever, oh, well, just find a place to go because we can't. So right now, the haulers that serve Wallingford, they obviously use this facility because of the agreements we have. We have a responsibility <coughs> to have an agreement of some sort. Well, we Is that what you're saying? We have to provide a place, whether it's an agreement or we own a place or we, we have to... We have to indicate where waste generated in Wallingford, where it can go to be disposed of. Well, my point is, how do you do that? Do you have to, as a community, secure that and Typically secure a contract? A contract. That's what we have to do. So, but listen, so you have to have an agreement as a community with somewhere right. that just says, okay, you're going to be where our haulers are going to go. Or it could be more than one place, but you have to, so right. you do have to have some kind of agreement. Provide you have to have a, provide a place for solid waste to be taken. Okay. 
I'm sorry, Mr. Um, Mr. Uh, Councilor Chestnut. Um, back when that law went into effect, one of the main oppositions was the fact that the state was interfering in a service that should have been owned locally at the town level, and the town could decide uh, on options. And there is some heavy criticism of the state for inter for that intervention and for that becoming law. So, just to put some context around, yeah, that I, was um, not a popular decision at that time. I, I recall I, that had slipped my mind that we talked about that several years ago. Um, but either way, we're, we're, so we would be in a position where we then have to go out and find some place. We know that there are, that the some place exists. No, we don't. Well, we do because they're going to go there. Well, so, I mean, you know. But they own those places. Covanta owns those places. Covanta operates Bristol. Right. And I forget what other places and Preston. They have. Preston. I mean, they, they're a player. They have flexibility. They can move things around. Right. They have the licensing. They have the capability. You know, when a municipality goes out kind of holding out their hand, uh, how, how long a term contract will you get? Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, there's a lot of unknowns. Well, so the point we I'm really making is there is, I guess my point was there is capacity. We would have to find it and we would have to secure it. We would have to, I mean, honestly, I'm not really crazy about that idea because it puts us in a lot of, you know, in a difficult position, to, but like most other communities. But we're, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be both taking advantage of and be at the mercy of the market, or whatever it might be, when and however long. We're just contracting with somebody else somewhere else. Um, but our advantage is at known dollar figures mm -hmm. with a benefit to the town. I'm not, I'm not, just, I'm not saying... So, I'm I mean, not that's, the, that's the benefit of in this. In favor of that. I, I'm You're not having to, to scramble on an annual basis or a monthly basis or whatever you know, and that's why we wanted to hold Covanta to the original contract, which we are. This is an amendment to that contract, but this contract was a 20-year with two, two five-year... Ten-year with two five-year... Ten year with two five year extensions. So we wanted to hold them to that. They they wanted out of it. Well, that leads me to my. Well, the reason I'm asking these questions, I'm trying to just uh, throw out any eventuality I can think of, so that all the questions that people might have and might bring up and ask me, I can say we've asked, and you know whether they you know how they've been answered. You know, we, we we can argue that. Um, so they didn't tell you. Or present to you what they projected their own cost to be to transfer this waste as they're proposing to I'm us. I'm aware of that. I think yeah. they right. said, no, we're not going to give their proprietary information. Right, mm -hmm. right. Um, now, a couple more. We talk about, here, here since, we're on the, since we're on the subject of the money side of it, I want to talk about contract remedies after this. It appears to me that we're talking about, well, we're talking about $5 a ton versus 11. Let's just keep it at that. $6, okay? And we're talking about a reduced tip fee of $5, round numbers. So if the tip fee remained where it is right now, which we all seem to be happy with, we would pretty much could get... The, the host fee we're getting now, for the most part. In other words, if they didn't drop the tip fee by $5 in the new agreement, there's your $5 that we could continue to get in host fee. It appears to me that, and correct me if I'm wrong, that our problem in some, to some degree may lie with the other communities. In, as much or more than co with Cavanta. Could be. They're, they're insistent on a lower tip fee. Well, my question is, why? Because they're not affected yes, in any way by the change of the contract. They're still going to have their garbage taken. Everybody's sitting happy at $70.30 a ton with the current contract. When they're so affected. How are they affected? Because they pay out of their municipal budgets, typically, the tip fee. Well, I understand that, but they're paying 70 now. But and if this but contract they pay sixty five, well, yeah, what, what, what gave them a right to ask for that? that should, because the change in this contract doesn't affect them. Their trash is still coming to Wallingford. They're happy at seventy bucks. Nothing. What was the inspiration for them to say, "Hey, wait a minute, I want a lower tip fee," because you're not burning it anymore? There is no rationale for that. 
In, yes, there is. In exchange for the change in the contract, they want something back, which is but, a reduction in the tip fee. But the, the contract, there was no change that affected them. Well, the processing of the waste doesn't affect them. See where I'm going? Well, but they, Covent? because Covanter is required to change the contract because right. they're changing the operation of the facility from a, a waste energy facility to a transfer station. It right. requires a change of the contract. I understand that. What I'm getting at is, and that so that opened up an opportunity for them to say, "Oh, we're changing the contract. I want a lower tip fee. We all want lower tip fees." But you you understand what I'm saying? In reality, this change in contract impacts them in no way. And and the if, you, if they pay less in a tip fee, it impacts them. Well, I, of course, my, I'm yeah, I'm arguing what gave them a right to ask that because they were asked to change an existing contract, so they want something. In right, and, in it, and this is, gets me to my point. It's the four other communities saying, well, here's an opportunity for us to get a lower tip fee. Sorry, Wallingford. You're going to take the hit on your host fee. Because that's the difference in the money, round numbers, round figures, you know, a couple hundred thousand here or there. You know what I'm getting at. But the the, it's not like they went to the five towns and said, we are going to change this contract, and um, it's going to impact you, Hamden, or you this, whoever, whoever, you this way, you this way, you this way. No, the only person that's affecting is us. But there's a positive effect for us. Well, what's the positive effect? We're no longer burning trash here. <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> no, no, I'm, oh, believe me, I, so, I'm so, not going to ask you. So let's say we're, we're sitting here and saying, no, we absolutely refuse to change this contract, so in order to get $11 a ton, we're going to continue to burn trash here. Even though Covanta would be saying, hey, we'll, we'll change this, it'll be a transfer station, uh, but you have to agree to not burn trash here. No, nope, we refuse that. We want $11 a ton. Now, just remove all the economics from it and the other issues there. I mean, there's there's one proposition. No, we're we're going to keep our eleven dollars. So if you have to burn trash here, that's fine with us. So I'm, so I mean, you know, you, you'd have a public discussion over our refusal to uh, to change it for, to a transfer station because we wanted the eleven dollars a ton. I mean, if that's the position, then people can state that. No, I, I, that that we're, we're, that are, that argument's with all due respect, to swaying into the absurd only because it's not falling in line with what I'm talking about. But, but it, it, I, it's I, not I, the absurd. And I, want, I like the idea of them not burning anymore. Okay, but it's not the absurd because the other towns want something, we're getting something, they want something, so in order for it to be changed to a transfer station, they want a lower tip fee. So that, you know, everyone wants something out of this, and behind it all is a problem with the economics in general. Understand totally, totally. I, I I fully understand that. All I'm saying is, they. If you look at the numbers they've proposed, they are saying to us that if the tip fee stayed at seventy, we could have been we could operate very happily as a transfer station, monetarily. You can continue to get maybe it goes from eleven to ten dollars a ton. See, I'm, I and I I understand the point you're making there. I because I like the idea, and I and I do believe that um, the host fee we have been getting all these years has been because we're hosting an incineration facility. Okay, um, but it was still the point. My point still remains that um, one way we could continue to get if they insisted that you know at seventy bucks with you getting ten or eleven. That's the best we can do, or we can't operate this enough to want to keep in business, stay in business, even though we're not, we can't show you as a private entity our financials. Now, those are the numbers that make us, allow us to stay in business, continue to be profitable enough to stay in business. We don't have to continue to operate the trash, uh, you know, the, the incineration facility with all the potential costs that incurs as the time goes on. But we can, we can go at that rate, and we don't really lose. Um, but because they've reduced that tip fee, we're taking, that's coming out of our pocket. Well, you can look at it, I mean, it is. Okay, and, right. And it's the other four communities insisting on a reduced tip fee that is, is reducing our host fee. Well, so they're that's still here. That's part of it, but keep in mind one other thing, and that is that Covanta 
also is worried about what they feel is, an, is, is at some point a major upgrade being necessary for the plant in the millions of dollars. So that is a huge, and that, they would look at that as a change of law that would impact everyone as far as the cost to achieve that. And I forget what the, what's the, MAC? MAC, Maximum Achievable um, uh, Technology. So it's being discussed at the federal level, and it would, it would be a multi-million dollar. They did not want to be in a position of having to spend that kind of money on a plant that they feel they want to end its operation. Well, that makes sense to me. So, so from a business standpoint, they, they, there, were, there were several things were motivating them. The other towns at one point wanted a tip fee of anywhere from 58 to 62 dollars. Is that, is that a change in the emission, the emission standards for the plant? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So at one point the towns were really looking for 58 to 62 dollars on the tip fee. I guess the way I look at it is, is that we still have those, the other four towns willing to pay essentially a tip fee that gives us a host fee that is still far and beyond any host fee that exists in Connecticut. Yeah, I, I, okay. I looked it all up too, and, I, you know, no, that make, and that makes that, sense I, to me. So you, the towns are still willing to hang together and pay that premium. I mean, because you could look on it as being, they're paying a premium for one. I'm, you know, I, I understand. I appreciate that um, it's a good thing, it would be a good thing, to know that we're no longer incinerating trash in Wallingford. I've always believed that, you know, it was as safe as it could be, but let's face it, if it's not burning, it's better than if it is burning. You know, that there are emissions, there are limits, and, you know, they've followed that for the most part. So. But who's going to say, I'd rather have it burning than not? I don't think anybody would say that. Um, so I appreciate there's a benefit to that. And I do also appreciate that um, we would be receiving a, a, a host fee that apparently is in far in excess, arguably four or five times more than any other community, that it seems to me anyway, that has a transfer station like this in their community. Am I correct so far? Um, so. Not to, you know, it's not like I'm against this because those things make sense to me. Um, but I have, you know, there have people asking me questions. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to answer them. I want them to have their questions answered, and I want it answered. Um, which leads me to, um, and I, I appreciate the fact that you brought up that the communities were saying, "Hey, listen, we could go with a loan and probably get a little less, but we like the idea that we have this purchasing power and." We'll pay more than we might be able to get because Wallingford should get a host fee. Well, That's what, kind of what you said. Well, but uh, they weren't necessarily saying that. I think that uh, what I can say, I, I can't read their minds. They were willing to agree to this, um, but behind it all, I think there was a recognition on the part of the towns. We wanted the security of the time in the existing contract that the, uh, Covanta would be obligated to continue to deal with our solid waste. Knowing what's happening in the market, there's, there's a benefit, real benefit to that, to hold them to the 10-year plus two five-year extensions uh, or whatever. Yeah. I, there's a benefit to that, and as time goes on, we'll find out if there are other options. You know, we can, we can deal with them, but all of a sudden to try to deal with major change in this, I think all the towns recognize that's that's just not not a good direction for us. So by what is it, 2020? Mm -hmm. when's, the, when's the first 10 years of yeah. yeah, 2020, uh, you know, there's a possibility of getting out of the contract. Well, you know, we'll have to take a look at that if there's something better. Um, but all there's a lot of facets to that. And right now, we, we can't recommend that we put ourselves in that position. There's more risk than there is gain. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Then you can have it. Um, get rid of me all at once. I, I may not, I may just have missed something here when trying to read these contracts, but there are a lot of, for, well, first of all, if we said no, we're holding you to the contract, 
I don't care if you burn or not, but we're holding you to the contract that allow, that gets us the host fee we're getting and the tip fees that are in there. We're not agreeing to a change. Two questions. One, what could happen? And two, um, what are the remedies that are referenced in this contract for a default? Because if they said, we're, sh we're shutting down, that's a default, or is it, is it not, as in the contract? In the contract. But the, I didn't see anything, that, it just said, it, it just kept saying you have the remedies available to you, you have the remedies available to you as referenced here, and all I saw was the opportunity to go to court, but there were no financial penalties spelled out. So what are the remedies? We take them to court and sue them. We breach a contract. Breach it, and, and we would have to go to court and sue them for, for a million dollars times at eight or seven. I mean, is that is that we'd have to go to court for it, or are there remedies? Either arbitration or court. I'm not sure. What That's what I'm saying. There are, but there are no penalties spelled out in here, right? Yeah. In the original contract. Right? Okay. And is it true, though? Am I correct that if we refuse to agree to this amendment, um, and they said, well, then we're you know we're taking our ball and going home. Uh, we that's default. Well, they would be breaching the contract. They'd be breaching the contract, and then we'd have to go to court, however you want to word that. And, and we, but we don't know what would happen. But that's our remedy, correct? Right. That's certainly one of them. I mean, they, they could they could come back with some other proposal. They could right. they could. Uh, I, I don't know. It's it's, it's well. I, I mean, you can, you're not, I'm not asking for the crystal yeah. ball. I mean, I know they can say it. more than likely we're probably just going to shut up the facility and close up shop. Very real. I, I would expect them to do that. But well, I'm not looking for that crystal ball. I'm just saying legally, is are, are our remedies to go to court? Well, our remedy would be to go to court. Okay. I suppose they could continue. They own that facility. They continue to operate it for the four towns, but all of our benefits and everything would be held in abeyance until whatever came yeah. out of the court action, the settlement, or whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, if, if it was truly a default, if they said we're done, you can't, we we can't work with you, or you know. We, we would have, our remedy is, is to sue them. Ultimately. Okay. Um, uh, that's all I have for the moment. <laughs> Thank you very much for your indulgence. Sure. Councilor Mansfield. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just looking at, uh, just to clarify, um, you know, when you look at this as a private entity and the changing economics, um, Connecticut is likely their most expensive plan in the world for them. This is the world's largest waste energy firm, I think, in the, in the world. I think they're their the market leader, if not one of them. Mm -hmm. um, is it safe to say that we are probably in our long for site one of their most expensive plants? Uh, I've done I've done some research on, on some of the other New England plants, and by far we have the, at least one of the lowest producing volume. Right, one of the smaller one of the smaller ones. Have, so. so you know, when you look at the changing economics, the, the federal restraints and the state law changes coming down the pipe, whether it's this year or the last few years, and what's forecasted, if you look at the, the um, proposals coming through, represent significant expense for this industry, significant. Not to mention, now locally, what our plans would have to do to retrofit, to maintain emission standards, and the redefinition of clean mm -hmm. for any plant, regardless of where we take it, whether we transfer, if we burn it, what is our? Can you clarify what our risk would? Have, what is our risk if if Cobanta retains the property, defaults on our breach right, or breaches the contract? Um, in our contracts and our amendments, what is the? Who owns that? Um, if they breach the contract, they still own the plant. They would still own the risk of capping and maintaining a clean or a safe facility at that point? If they're operating it. If they're operating it. They're free, if they breach the contract, they're still free to do anything with it. They can still burn, they can transfer. We have no way of, of controlling that based on their, their plant ownership. Mm -hmm. um, if we do, if they do breach, if they say, you know, this is not economical for us, and I can't believe it is, I think that they would want us all to walk away mm -hmm. without a millisecond of consideration is for us to go away and, and cancel this contract. Say, go go find something better. I, I can't, I'm just looking at the economics on the table, our volume is too small. Um, but if we go, if, if we do add breach language for 
they are walking away from our contract. At some point, they may pull the plug because another law comes down from our, our Connecticut state, le um, state level or national level and says, this is now not sustainable. We're a private company. We're here to make a profit. None of your business what we're making, by the way, we'll never get that information, but you can guarantee their profit margin is slimming. Mm -hmm. So if they walk away, what options do we have to add some language that would give us a rider or some proportion of future profit loss because they breached a contract? All of our contracts have a, a clause that guarantees us a piece of that revenue that says if you walk away from our five-year or our ten-year or one-year contract, we get a percentage back because we entered a con in good faith in a pipeline of profitability and that revenue should be coming back to us. Is that a feasible cost to, to consider or, or is that feasible? I, I don't see it as a feasible no, because I don't think it gets us anywhere. And the reality is, is the plant going to continue to operate and serve our needs or not? So if you go through all of that, whatever money you might gain, you're going to spend a lot of money trying to figure out where we're going to go. So you're not going to make money on it. It's going to be a question of what your damages are. Um, and I'm sure they'd come in and say they're losing money on it. So what's the profit that you're sharing? Is there, um, could there be a timetable to give the town some sort of window where we could consider options and still maintain some revenue stream while we're considering options in the case of a breach or a default at well, that point? Is there any stipulations that we could? We, the contract is in place until 2020, which is a very short time uh, realistically, if we were to really entertain going somewhere else and doing something different. It's, it's a, such a com complex subject and with the volatility of everything that's going on in the marketplace right now, I, I, it, would, it, would be, it would be difficult. I mean, it's, it's you know, my assumption that, you know, Wallingford as well as the other towns are, in pretty short order, going to be looking very seriously at that 2020 date and begin, you know, discussions about what happens at that point. So with the contingency plan in the current contract, or our current relationship with Covanta, um, if, if we were to look at the current amendment on the table, so let's say you say, you know, Tiffany's never going to get, I don't think it's going we're, our economics never improve with this. I mean, I, I've come to that conclusion looking at the industry analysis. I don't think we get any better. I think it's unbelievably rich considering where the environment is already in the state or in the New England area. So kudos to you for getting that. I just don't see how they sustain that for the term of this contract. I just see there's an inevitable breach on the table. And it's, and it's, and there, I don't think there's anything you can do in, in your positions to, to change it. I just don't think the economics will ever support this company staying at least with a long for location, and even as a transfer station, I think, are, you know, given even the volumes. Um, so I'm just wondering, I think there's an inevitability of, of here for contingency. How, how or what is our plan for that? Um, because the volumes just aren't there. It's I just... Well, there's a, there's a reset of the tip fee. So if the market demands much higher tip fees, and that's what's shown in the analysis that goes with the reset, then the tip fee will go up to reflect that. Uh, we get a year at the 65, but if it's really going downhill, uh, the tip fee will go up, and the contract provides for that in the reset. And then based on CPI, which you, you cited, we had a range to yeah. consider. Um, given the other four towns, um, can you just clarify, I think for the record, um, one of the other benefits that we get by staying in a cooperative agreement together is that there, our volume combines in the event that one of us leaves. That the other town's crash value would contribute to us maintaining our annual commitments, right? Because we do have a minimum to hit, even. Right. So there is a benefit to the regional approach. Yeah, I think each town has to maintain its its, uh, its own its, its commitment, but it was reduced. It's an aggregate commitment. It's it's reduced from sixty nine thousand tons now to forty eight thousand tons. But, but our benefit from my perspective, is that we have a committed place regardless of what happens. It's a committed place. And as things evolve, should we want to go in another direction? It's possible. But I do think not only we have a committed place, but with the five towns in that volume, we 
hopefully would command a greater interest from some other uh, potential vendor, uh, merchant plant or whatever, to be able to guarantee uh, waste to go elsewhere. Obviously, there's a distance issue. The geographic location is of advantage to all five towns. It's right here. Mm -hmm. So every time you, uh, and that was a concern to the other towns, if, if you move elsewhere, it's mileage issues. And that increases the cost that everyone would pay for disposal. And so that, that was of concern to a number of the towns that where they have contractors picking up waste and they have contracts and the contracts are by the mile. And having it here is a lesser cost than going somewhere else. So there's, there's, there's both individual and collective advantages for us to continue with the general arrangement we have. And I agree. I think the, I think there is a common value in, in having a solution that the town isn't owning. There's not another department you have to add and subsidize and resource and, and own. Environmentally, the um, the transfer station emissions obviously we, we don't have to worry about that, and we've got it covered in terms of the the current um, the current amendments or the current contract. They maintain the same transportation lines or the access right to 91, so we're right. not adding more local roads. We've got a few additional trucks coming through, which again, we don't want to underscore that there is more traffic coming through. But um, So there's no additional risk from the environmental standpoint. In fact, it's reduced. Mm -hmm. So again, on that side. Um, Mr. Chairman, I had some other questions. I'm going to defer to the other counselors um, on that. Thank you. Um, so one thing we, we pretty well identified is that this is a compulsory service. We have to arrange for this. It's, it's, it's like if you drive a car on the road in Connecticut, you have to insure it. There's no avoiding the expense. There's no avoiding the responsibility of having to regularly <coughs> dispose of the, the residential waste. So we have this collaboration with five towns where they provide waste to a facility here in town. We get some benefit for being the town through which the trucks drive uh, currently through which the regulated emissions uh, are created. But, you know, I, I think in terms of supply and demand, and if this facility is to shut down, you have five towns looking for a place to bring their waste. Um, it, I think you've said it before, what's the average that they're getting from our five towns in terms of tonnage per year? Um. Combined commercial and residential, uh, this past year it was about 120,000. Okay. So this facility shutting down puts 112,000 tons out shopping for places to get rid of waste. I, I think it's a reasonable presumption that the facilities that are going to continue to operate are going to be able to drive up their, their tipping fees because there's going to be more obligatory waste to dispose of without a place to bring it. Is, is that a fair presumption? Well, and you could argue both sides of that. And certainly you're, you're desperate to find a place which makes you hostage. On the other hand, if there's plenty of capacity uh, elsewhere, you, you could have lower fees because it's a spot waste issue. But you're never going to be sure at any given time what it is, and typically in spot waste, they're not going to give you any long-term contract. So, but I, I can't say that, yes, it's going to necessarily be higher, but on balance, you know, the potential is certainly there. But I can't say that there wouldn't also be some, some uh, likelihood of spot waste here or there. But again, it's, it would be an ongoing effort. We'd have to have people really dealing with this on a more consistent basis than we have now. So, but nonetheless, we, we've got an obligation to take care of it. The benefit of us, we have to budget annually. So the foreseeability of what we have in terms of expenses for, for taking on an, an, an obligatory service, there's a certain benefit to us for that. So we do have an, I think we do have an obligation on behalf, behalf of our constituents to, to do this type of planning. Um, you know, and, and I'm... I'm having this thought process out loud because, you know, part of me wonders if we if this falls apart and we have to go shopping on the open waste disposal market, are are we are we creating a perilous situation for ourselves where we don't have the ability to predict what we're going to be paying 
to dispose of our waste, let alone the fact that any host fee has gone. Um, so it, it, I understand that for those reasons, this has to be managed in some way, shape, or form. The current, the current situation has to be, it, it doesn't have to be maintained in terms, of, in terms of, of continuing to burn waste, but we've got to figure out where our garbage goes. And what we're doing with this contract is saying, if it comes into our town, you're going to pay us something for it. So, um, th those are the ec economic things that go through my mind when I look at the situation we're dealing with. Um, and, and I think this contract is an effort to manage many of those interests uh, and, and make sure that our town continues our legal obligation to dispose of waste and at the same time there's, there's the benefit of being a host location and collecting a host fee. So uh, with that I understand Councilor Letourneau you had some more questions. Yeah, I just, I, I do, but I want to follow up to, to your comments also that I, I think it's a given that we know it's not going to be a burn plant. We know that. And that's fine. It's going to be a transfer station. And we do have an obligation. We have to have a place for the, the garbage to go. That's a given. I have no problem with that. Being the host community, though, I think what troubles me just a little bit is, you know, the other community saying, "Well, okay, we're going to let you, we're going to let you amend the original contract. We're going to let you do that, but we want a lower, we want a lower tip fee." Negotiations happen in the other towns to get the lower tip fee. Okay, if they sit back. That's fine. They got what they wanted. But then it comes to us as the host community. These are the trucks going across our routes. This is the garbage coming into our town. And we're not burning it. That's fine. We're not burning it. But it's still coming in. It's still coming across our roads. And they're telling us, now Cavant is telling us, we're going to give you $5 a ton. How do these other communities say, we want, we want this, and they got it, and why can't we say, oh, and by the way, to let you wiggle out of this contract for what, all the economic reasons that have been said here tonight make perfect sense, but we're still letting them amend the contract to their benefit so they can stay in business. I feel that we should get a higher tip fee. Now, eleven dollars? Maybe I don't know. I don't know because we, we, it's hard to base it because we don't have any figures to base this on because they're not giving any figures. But just looking on the surface, when this contract started in two thousand and eight, they were at sixty-five dollars a ton, and they were operating a burn plant which was more expensive. The offset by some electric, it was still more expensive. The tip fee's going up a little bit. And here we are, resetting their contract, re doing them a favor. Anybody that comes to you with a contract, if I have a contract for somebody, I, I've had many contracts. But if I go to that person and say, look, you know, things are tough. I'm not, I can't make it. I can't do this. The first words out of their mouth say, okay, we'll talk about it. But you can bet dollars to donuts, it's going to benefit more them than it will be me. What's going to benefit me is I'm getting to <coughs> amend it to help me. It's not going to cure it, but it's going to help me. But they're going to, they're calling the shots because if they say no, i gotta, I got to deal with the contract. I've got to deal with that contract. I just think as a host community, that I, I, I just don't think five dollars a ton. I don't think it's a service to, to, to the citizens of Warren. And uh, it's I, I, I would just like to see more of that. Now, that being said, <coughs> if Cavanta opens this transfer station 
has the, the original communities. If they take in other communities, say New Haven, they start taking trash in from New Haven, and the facility's really running good, and they're, it's, everything is working good, do we get a tip fee? For, I haven't seen any language in here. If they take garbage from outside of the outside of the participating communities within the contract, if they can take waste from other towns, you know, do we get the uh, host fee for that? We get a dollar. We get a dollar. Um, why wouldn't they, you know, I mean, I don't want to mix this with, with commercial now, but if they're taking residential, the same garbage that they're going to be taking from the other towns, taking from us and taking from other towns, not the commercial, but the residential, why wouldn't we get the same tip fee? I mean, the, the same host fee. Charge them a $5 a ton host fee. Well, basically, we're ignoring the, the revenue side of this. The problem is there isn't revenue. The revenue is coming from tip fees. That's where it comes from. And without the tip fee, there is no electric revenue. This was built on having a lot of electric revenue. Well, there's not a lot of electric revenue. So it's built on a tip fee revenue stream. And our other towns wanted a reduction in the tip fee. There's no way to get a reduction and have money coming in and maintain our existing host community benefit and pay more for all of the other tons coming in because their tip fee then will be high enough that they won't get any waste from anywhere else. So No, 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 Mayor, what, you, you misunderstood what I'm saying. If, if they open this up, I, I'm hypothetically New Haven, I just... But I New Haven won't come here if they have to charge them a high, a high tip fee. They have to meet what the market is. Right now the spot at times is $30 right. a ton. Let me hypothetically with this. If, if New Haven is paying for their residential waste, if they're paying $70 a ton. Well, we don't know what they're paying. Well, we don't know. That's what I'm saying. We don't know. But I'm just saying. It becomes community. spot waste, John. It becomes spot waste. So whoever has waste and they need to fill up the capacity, it's a marketplace, and yeah, it's dropped through the floor, which ends up being a problem for everyone because there's not enough money being paid in tip fees to handle all the business. So what happens is it's, it's, it's great for people who have waste and they want to, they may be charging for $70 a ton, but they're going to be paying $30 a ton. I mean, it's great for that marketplace as far as which end of it you're on. But for a business that is handling the waste, like Covanta, it's the tip fee they have to receive because they end up having to, right now, run the plant, etc. Well, they're not making it. And, and anything we have that. would tell us that that's accurate. So, get away from that. Man. So to bring New Haven in, okay, but to bring New Haven in, you're going to have to...